Hey, how's it going dudes and dudettes? Brad the Guitologist here. Uh, in this video, I uh, wanted to show you what I'm doing with my space here. I'm kind of getting things set up and uh, finally dug out my signal generator. And uh, the signal generator I'm going to show you in a second. That I also dug out my oscilloscope. Um, I've been telling you guys for a long time that I had one. <laughs> they were just buried. Uh, this, this signal generator... Um, is a real neat piece of equipment. This thing is uh, is is a navy. It's a navy something or other. Let's see, where is it? Navy property uh, made by Traveler Radio Corp of Chicago, Illinois. Really interesting thing. It's definitely military. Um, I opened that thing up last night just to uh, check the inside before I uh, plugged it in because it's been setting forever and ever and uh, it actually does work <laughs> it generates a signal you might even be able to hear it a little bit there but this thing goes way down on the output the output on this one goes down in the microvolts uh, so you know depending on what equipment you're you're working with you can adjust you can adjust this output it actually goes way down or it goes way up as well uh, this is interesting too it had um, actually because it was used in the field probably in a military setting it has two different uh, it had two different housings that were used for housing spare fuses these two right here and that's all they were for they're not even hooked up internally um, they're just there to house spare fuses so if you blow this thing in the field you'll have a spare fuse on hand so that's, I guess that was their way of packing a spare fuse around um, the only thing I found that doesn't work on it at least I don't think it's working is that uh, that meter right there I don't think that's working or maybe that's a switch of some kind. No, that is a. I don't know. It's some kind of meter. I'm not sure if it's working or not. But you can actually turn it on or off. And it doesn't appear to do anything when you turn it on or off. So I'm not sure on that part. Everything else works perfectly though. Um, it has two different uh, switches. One of them you can turn the oscillation off. And the other one is for the heaters. But yeah, cool, cool piece of kit. Now this is this is pretty ancient too. I mean, it's not as old as that thing, but this is pretty ancient too. So there might come a time when we will uh, we'll mess around with a scope a bit more, maybe. I you know I don't see much call for what I do uh, for using a scope very much. Um, you know, I sometimes might have a need for one, but um, it's fairly rare. So. Rare enough that I've never had to dig these out in all the time I've been doing videos. And I've repaired probably, I don't know, a couple hundred amps at least on my channel. So, But I just wanted to show you those. I've got those up and running. And then this thing was actually uh, really what I wanted to show you most. This is a, this is a Vocam Shenandoah power supply. It's a DC power supply, model 2541. But look at this thing, man. This was made. It's made in England. Made in London by Shandon. Cool, big, cool meters on this thing. And you have a switch here for um, regulating voltage or regulating current. Uh, and you can just adjust them, of course. You got a 6.3 volt, uh, 3 amp power supply over here, also, if you want to run some filaments. Um, it's got a fuse, on off switch, and you've got a couple taps over here for your output voltage. Uh, but the coolest thing about this is just the way it's built. Um, these transformers and everything are just super cool. This thing would have had, and somebody stole all the tubes, and we're going to replace this, the tubes. And get this thing up and running. I think um, just 
just for giggles. I might use this as my bench power supply on some projects in the future. Uh, but it takes a 5v4 rectifier. An EL34 would have been in this, and probably that was from the Mullard factory, I'm sure. Um, originally, that's why they. <laughs> I'm sure that's why they pulled it. And then it uses a couple of weirdo uh, regulator tubes, CK or that C. No, it's CV. I was confused by that at first. It's actually CV 287 tubes. Um, at least they were, at least they were kind enough to mark that down before they stole the tubes. Um, but I also found it online. But this is the coolest thing to me. This big power transformer goes from a hundred uh, hundred volts input all the way up to I think 240. But look how it works. It has these little jumpers here, and what you do is you take, for instance, you take um, you take this one here and you put it on. Uh, 200 and then you divide that by two you add 30 so that's 230 divided by 2 is 115 <laughs> so that's how you actually get your voltage set so I guess if I wanted 120 I would go I would go up to 24 I would move this over to 240 move this over to plus zero and then switch this thing around so that it's or excuse me no I'd leave that to at divide 2 and then if I wanted it at like 220 or something, I move it over to 220 plus zero, and then turn this around um, so that it's in the times one position. So interesting, interesting thing. But just cool meters on this. Very well built. The capacitors are a, a dry electrolytic, so they might be okay. We'll see. But this thing I think is from. I think this thing's from 1955. I've obviously got an EL34 and a rectifier tube, but I'm going to have to order those other two tubes, and I'm also going to have to replace the power cord that somebody uh, snipped off. But other than that, it looks complete, and it's very well made. I mean, look at the look at the way this thing is laid out. It's just very tidy. So here's the tube that I'm missing, the CV-287 or the QS-150-15, I guess. Um, and it looks like only one company might have made these, and they were pretty much all produced for the military uh, for voltage regulation. Uh, but I'm going to order a couple of these, and we'll see how it goes. Um, I think, let me see. Yeah, there's the pin out for it. Strange tube. Here is the page I found on Radio Museum. And apparently later versions had a KT88 and a solid state rectifier in it. And it looks like they changed the power uh, transformer as well so that it wasn't quite as universal as the one that I have. Uh, let's see. I wonder if it'll show me these pics without me. Oh yeah. So definitely built to a different standard later on, it looks like. Um, I think I like the look of mine better than this. Overall. Slightly different on the cosmetics too. But all the same functions. And I think I like the look of uh, I think I like the look of the older meters, also. Just everything about it, everything about the older one, looks just better, better to me. Uh, I'm sure this is still a good unit, but interesting, just an interesting unit. Um, so I'm definitely going to see if I can do something with this. And what does it say here? Okay, the tubes for this power supply have come in. Let's unbox them and let's pop them in the power supply and see what it does. And these are English Electric Valve Company LTD.
right and there's one of them Seventy five twenty nine. I guess that's another I guess that's another name for the tube. So we'll wire up a wire up a power cord and then test it out. Okay, that soldering iron is working very well. Actually, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised and happy by that. All right, I found a couple five e fours in my stash. I had to brave the snow to go out and get them, and it is really coming down. Man, this has been a heck of a winter so far. Should open the up. Should always open the. Should always open the ends that don't have the name designation on them. Usually, most tubes are easier to get out that way. Which just will make a liar of me. All right, five v four. A little Coke bottle. That's from an Admiral radio. So we'll see if it works. Okay. Now we've got glow on that, so that's better. It's more like it. Okay. Let's measure some voltage. All right, right now we're on the 6.3 volt uh, AC. And we have 6.9 volt AC. But that's because we have 120 volt coming in, I think. Now our voltage adjust is working like it's supposed to. And this may actually, will this come down? This may drop down as things heat up. But that's close enough. I mean, that's that would be fine for filaments. Uh, if we want to run, um, you know, tube filaments in a little design, we could do that. I wonder if uh, I wonder if this meter's very accurate. Let's pop over here and measure some voltages over here. Let's see. Looks like this is going to give us AC and DC voltage or something, maybe. Got some AC voltage going on there. It's supposed to be DC. There's 130 volts. See, it goes all the way down to 54 volts. I wonder why it's not going any lower. It's 
So it'll go from 54. Let's see what it goes up to. I'm measuring 200 over here. And I'm at 211 right there. So it's not too far off. About 16 volts off. That's not too bad. It's under 10%. So we're up to 315 right there. So we got a range of 315 down to 50, about 50 or so volts, 54 volts. I wonder if it's any different over on this side. I'm sure these are at the same potential, but no, won't be any different. Let's see, constant current. Whoa, 465 volts. Okay. Well, that brings it all the way down. For the price of a cord, a couple minutes, and uh, a couple of tubes that I had to order, I've got a working unit. So, so yeah, that is a Vocam Shandon power supply. Model 2541. Cool looking unit. Thanks for watching this video. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And for now, y'all take care.